What's up guys? We are in beautiful Los Angeles. Well, at least beautiful compared to New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, so we are in our hotel room. Thankfully, early check-in was fine. I got here like around 11 and I just wanted to either drop off my bags or check into the hotel because we are going to see uh, the doctor in about an hour for the pre-op uh, appointment. The flight over here and everything, not too fun. I wore like seven layers like an idiot thinking I could just bring more clothing out of my bags. And uh, I was about to have a heat stroke. It was bad. It was, you know, it was cold on the plane, so I was actually fine. But like getting on the flight and then getting off the flight at LAX was just like, it was bad. So I didn't sleep at all last night, laid in bed till about one in the morning, got up drove from Pennsylvania to JFK, which took a few hours. And then we got on a 7 a.m. flight to get to LA. It's 12 p.m. in Los Angeles now, so it's been a pretty long day. I'm, I'm really happy that I didn't have a headache. I was almost, I felt like I was almost getting one, but you know, I, I thought like doing this trip and traveling for the surgery, I, I didn't think I was in a good health position to do so, but uh, I'm all right, I'm, I'm feeling okay. I probably won't feel okay after this guy gouges my eyes out tomorrow. <laughs> but um, TSA took some of my food. I brought oatmeal and white bean puree in addition to like roast beef and bread. They let me keep the roast beef and the bread. I just wanted to have food for like a day or two before like having to eat the food in the hotel here and everything, which doesn't look that bad. It's just, uh, you know, obviously it's hard to keep like super, super, super clean unless you bring food yourself. But I thought like the, the white bean puree and the oatmeal counted as solid food, but they took it. I could have checked a bag and kept the food in the checked bag, but I was like, I don't really want to because uh, if you guys have ever been to the airport, like the, the bag check station, like anyone can walk in and take your bag. Like where they let the bags out from the flight, it's there's no security clearance. Like anyone can walk in and take the luggage which I didn't like, so I just wanted to keep all my bags on the flight, but um, all that would have really done is I would have had some white bean puree. I could have bought like organic bread and had the white bean puree with the meal. So I really, maybe I really should have kept the white bean puree. The, the oatmeal and the breakfast wasn't a big deal. I skipped breakfast anyway, but that white bean puree might've uh, might have saved me. So we could just go to Whole Foods and buy a few jars of cannellini beans. But uh, I'm kind of excited to see this doctor. This is a uh, forty thousand dollar, not forty thousand dollar. It's around thirty thousand dollars. But like, the hotel, I got to pay for a nurse. Every all the expenses out here, the whole trip is going to be. It, it's a lot of money. You know, the hotel is like three four hundred a night. I don't know how much I'm going to spend in the food in the restaurants. The nurse is very expensive. Maybe we we'll only need the nurse for a few days, but the nurse is like fifty dollars an hour and any twenty four hour care. Um, but this was something that uh, I was thinking of doing for a really long time. Uh, I kind of called it. I was going to do it last year um, because it's funny. Like all this look smacking nonsense started after I was actually going to get the surgery. Uh, so that didn't really have much of an influence on it. I remember someone emailed me four or five years ago about this and I was like, eh, I don't know. It doesn't look like a, a well, a well-known surgery. And then uh, a few more years passed and I looked into it. I thought about it. Uh, because from like a from like a facial development perspective, like most of my face is 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 pretty good. I'm pretty lucky. I'm a decent looking guy, but my eyes have always been like you know sad, tired, droopy. Uh, so this was kind of this was kind of the solution. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna go. I don't know if I said it already. Our appointment to see the surgeon for the pre-op is in about an hour, so I'm gonna leave the hotel in about 45 minutes. And um, I guess I'll show you guys what I brought with me. So the hotel room could be better. I don't know what that is on the floor. Probably lipstick. I don't think it's dark enough to be blood. <laughs> I mean, look, the room could be cleaner, guys, but the Waldorf next door is about $1,100 a night, and I'm not spending an extra $10,000 on this trip, that's for sure. Uh, so in our suitcase, uh, these are one pair of shoes I brought, and then I brought my boots. That's what I wore here. I threw a bunch of biltong in my suitcase, just some plain beef jerky if I need a plain protein source. And then this is just, uh, well, 
here, here are all the clothes, the layers I was wearing, literally seven layers, sweating my guts out. I actually had to take off the clothes in the airport bathroom because I was sweating so much, so overheated. Just some underwear, a few pairs of sweats. You know, I didn't really bring anything. I don't expect to be going out after this procedure. Like, I'm not going to really be able to go to restaurants or anything. So I didn't bring anything that looked presentable. So that's just some clothes. And I think there might be some Wi-Fi shielding stuff in there. Uh, oh, yeah. So about half of this is just regular clothes. And like here you see, I brought extra pairs of Wi-Fi shielding clothing. Uh, we had a layer of the long sleeve sweats and pants on, but I'm wearing. Uh, I'm always wearing the Wi-Fi shielding clothing. Uh, here I just bought the supplements that I need for this week. Uh, things to reduce my copper, molybdenum, zinc, and vitamin B1. And then we have some mastic and some charcoal. So these are like the supplements that I'm going to have with every meal. And then if I'm going to go out to a restaurant, I actually bought some uh, little plastic baggies with me so I can bring the pills with me to the restaurant and not have to carry all this with me. Passport car keys. That's the medication for the surgery the doctor gave me. I might not take, probably not gonna take the antibiotics. Uh, I brought some water key for grains. The uh, TSA did not seize the water key for grains, which uh, might or might not be a lifesaver. I don't really, I'm not really sure if I need them. Uh, I was gonna use that instead of the antibiotics. Over here, we just have an apple and some bread. Uh, I ate the roast beef already, so maybe I should have brought some extra, but this is the Icelandic water from the airport. I'm gonna go to I'll talk about that in a second. And this is just my laptop that I've never really used. Uh, Lenovo Legion with a Leopold keyboard and ambidextrous. I mean, I bought this a while ago because I thought I was going to travel more and stuff, but I guess it comes to use now. And, uh, and I'll be able to use it also if I get a second location as the main computer. I bought a grounding rod, a grounding plug-in for the wall. And you probably shouldn't use this more than an hour or two because of the high non-native frequencies, but it's better to do it one hour a day than not at all. And then here I just have a bunch of EMF protective stuff. Uh, I wore like two hoods when I was in the, when I was on the plane, I had two hoods on my head and the hat at all times. Then I just have some bandanas and some hoods here and some uh, EMF head protection for when I'm gonna sleep. Uh, yeah, I don't really want this vlog to be too long. I want it to be focused on the surgery and like 20 minutes or less. You know, I don't want to show like all the lifestyle stuff. I'm just giving you guys an idea of what I needed to travel. Mostly EMF protective clothing, a small amount of food, the supplements. Uh, we're going to go I mean, we're in Los Angeles, guys. It's basically like New York where you should have access to everything. So I'm going to stop by Whole Foods and see if there's anything I want to pick up. Main, the main thing I got to get at Whole Foods is if, I got to get a few cases of glass bottled water. And uh, we're going to go to Target and get... Uh, a high powered fan if the hotel doesn't have one just so i can blow air on my face when i'm sleeping with because of the it's hard to breathe you can't breathe in the head cover without airflow um yeah so we're gonna go to the doctor's appointment we're gonna go to whole foods and target i don't know how i'm gonna do that maybe i can convince an uber to keep his stuff in the car and pay him extra but uh yeah this this um we'll go see the doctor and then we'll talk about the, the surgery after we see him. All right, guys, I'm back in the hotel. <laughs> I got some sparkling water. We did the iodine nasal flush. They didn't have the regular flat water. And uh, if you guys ever put sparkling water in your nose, you'll know <laughs> it's not a good idea. Like, for some reason, the carbonation, it, like, completely clear, clears it out. It's really, really, like, acrid, which might be a good thing or a bad thing. But uh, I'm just doing that because, you know, I'm interacting with a lot of people. Uh, that usually clears up my headache. Um, but we went to Whole Foods. We went to Target to get the fan uh, after we saw the doctor. Nice guy, talks really sweet. Uh, procedure originally was like, he was around 30,000 for what he wanted to do, which is a, a lot of procedures. It's uh, first is an orbital decompression where they take out some bone behind the eye to, to let the eyes get more deep set and further back. Second is uh, a rim, an orbital rim implant down here for the shallowness. Third is a lower eyelid lift a little bit called lower eyelid retraction. And the fourth is the upper eyelid ptosis repair. So originally he was only gonna do uh, one stage decompression. He might do two stages, which is a little further back. And instead of just doing the, the ptosis, the upper eyelid on the right eye, he might do it on the left eye too. So basically like 
the way my eyes are, I have pretty much like the worst combination of features possible that made me eligible for everything he offered. Like a lot of the other patients that see him, they don't have like, you know, they don't have the eyes tilted. They usually have one of the three or four problems, maybe two. In my case, I'm four for four. So uh, I think there's another $8,000 added on to that. So whatever. My, my business credit card has a very high limit. <laughs> That's the only way I was able to afford this, guys. I like, I wanted to get myself a birthday present this year for going through so much. And uh, I just got a business line of credit on one of my LLCs. And I'm just going to pay it off for like a year. So that's that. We got everything ready. Um, it's about 3.30 p.m. right now. And my head is feeling better. My head's, headache's clearing up. So I'm going to just do my emails, do a little work. Um, I'm probably going to relax for an hour or two. Just hydrate, relax. Then we're going to go to, I think, Del Frisco's and get a steak and potatoes. Maybe because I worked at Del Frisco's in New York and it's a little nostalgic and it's a steakhouse that's close by. So we'll go to Del Frisco's for dinner. And then we'll come back to the hotel and get to bed early and just rest until the morning. Um, I just want to get my emails and stuff done because... He's telling me I'm not going to be able to really see or do a lot of computer work for four or five days. And it's, you know, it's, it's Wednesday now. So if I, my eyes are going to be completely closed for like two days. And then Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, I might be able to start seeing and maybe doing some computer work, he said. But I don't know. So I'm just going to get some stuff set up on my businesses. We're telling people like I'm out of the office until next week, uh, until middle of next week. And, um. He also said that, uh, so then I'm going to see him a week from the surgery tomorrow, next Thursday, and then that should be it. My flight's on Saturday morning, and I paid for the hotel, but am I, I'll see how I feel. I might just move the flight up because I'd rather, like, you know, waste one or two nights of hotel expense and just get home a day or two earlier because it's not like I can really go out and have fun with the way my face is going to look. Maybe we, I'll have to see how I feel. If my vision isn't 100%, um, I might stay because I have to drive my car back from the airport when I get to New York, so that might be a problem. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it is. All right, guys, I'm lying here in my hotel room. I got all my EMF stuff on. I got a fan blowing in my face so I can breathe. <laughs> um, I, for <laughs> I forgot my deodorant, which is a little important. I also forgot my EMF meter, which would help me tell if this is effective enough or not. But uh, I'm feeling a little better, uh, unfortunately. I had to take three Motrin so far today, ibuprofen, which is like the only pain medication that doesn't mess up my liver because my head was starting to hurt. Uh, I went to the restaurant here. I was gonna go to Del Frisco's, but I decided to check the hotel restaurant to see like, okay, if I have to order room service in here for the next like few days, like is it, am I, is that what I'm gonna do? And the food's like really bad and really overpriced. So uh, I think there's a Shake Shack near here. I think I'm honestly just gonna DoorDash plain hamburgers from Shake Shack and have it with some beans. Um, one option I had when coming out there there was an um, there was like a care facility I could have stayed in which was like about the same as I'm paying this nurse per night, like over $1,000. And they had food and stuff. I didn't ask them about the food and the dietary restrictions and stuff, so I'm feeling like that would have been the better option now. Because the, the reason I stayed in this hotel was because I thought the food options would be better and I'd be able to like get my own food and stuff. But um, I don't know. It's too late now, so it's whatever. So I'm gonna try to relax for a few hours. Um, it's only like 7 p.m. and the, the surgery's at like seven in the morning. So it's not like I'm gonna be able to sleep for 12 hours straight, but that's um, that seems like what the food situation's gonna be, unfortunately. Uh, if I had to do things over again, I would have probably got what was I supposed to do? Rent an Airbnb, get here a day early and like prep food? Like it's ridiculous. 
I think plain hamburgers from Shake Shack are gonna be fine. Cause I can get like, they have like a really crappy steak sandwich here that is like 30 bucks. And it's like five ounces of steak and the fries are disgusting. So I'm literally just gonna DoorDash Shake Shack and get like five burgers for the same price. It's, it's kind of crazy. All right, we've actually researched our options. The problem with Shake Shack is the uh, potato buns they use are with enriched fortified flour. And I think that might mess up my sleep. And I'm looking at all of these like steakhouse places around here and it's, they're all like, I'm not gonna pay for like steak twice a day, like 70 bucks, like that's crazy. Bro, Wendy's, this sounds silly. Wendy's uses fresh beef it's only beef and they have baked potatoes. I think we're doing Wendy's, boys. Until we try it once and I get sick. <laughs> All right, the went one week Wendy's diet, bro. How, how messed up is that I'm in Los Angeles and the healthiest food I can find is Wendy's? I, I brought some biltong and I have jarred cannellini beans, but I don't have a starch carb source, no rice, no potatoes, so I need it. And like, like I'm not gonna DoorDash a, a steakhouse, you know, twice, I mean, we're going fucking broke anyway with this shit. Um, 11.48. Oh, fuck, alright, so let's go, okay. <laughs> let's rolling? Go. Yeah. Alright guys, the procedure over, uh, the procedure's over. This medieval nut job gouged my eyes out for five hours. I don't feel too <laughs> I don't feel too bad, but I can see like blurry out of my right eye and my left eye is closed. So uh, we're gonna go on the street and see if we can get some fentanyl because this guy won't give me more. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'm probably gonna Oh, oh yeah, so let me see how bad the swollen is so what does it look uh, looks like the same as yesterday, right? Yeah. Is it bright enough in here? I don't really know. All right, I'm pretty sure we're rolling. Uh, I'm basically blind, so <laughs> I I really, it took me about five minutes just to click the camera icon on my phone and uh, click record. Um, I was gonna wait for this girl to do it for me and help me, but I don't know when she's gonna be back. So we are at, um, it's called Zen Healing Retreat. I think it's in Bel Air. It's, uh, it's the same company that I was hiring the nurses from to come to my hotel. And I think I told you guys, like, the reason I actually didn't just come here in the first place was because, like, I checked the Google Maps at a bad time. And I thought it was, like, 45 minutes away. Uh, so I went, I opted for the hotel, which was closer, but it's actually 10 minutes away with, like, without bad traffic. Um, so before I explain why we switch from the hotel to here, um, I'll explain uh, how the day of surgery went. So um, today is the, uh, fr it's Friday morning right now, very early Friday morning. We left the hotel at seven in the morning to come here. That video I just played before this was probably uh, an hour or two ago. Um, so first day post-op, um, I actually felt okay enough the first day to probably film, but, um, I came back. um, yeah, I'm going to film a vlog real quick. You want to just give me five minutes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on. Can you actually come over here and make sure I'm rolling? Cause I, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I think, I think I, I think I was able to decipher that the camera's rolling, but I'm not sure. Am I rolling? In landscape you are facing rolling. me? Okay, we're good. <laughs> Just double checking. Uh, so the surgery was actually in this guy's office. Uh, originally, I thought it was going to be in a hospital, um, but he did it, you know, in his office. So I got there around 6:45, and uh, 
they were like on California time, so didn't get there till like seven. So that's when I got let in. Um, I think I was with the nurse and changing into the gown for about 15 minutes. Uh, then we went right over to the surgery room uh, where a nice Asian doctor is anesthesiologist. Lays me down in the bed, starts talking to me and I was like, I mean, this it was deja vu for me because I know like they, they talk to you and in about two minutes, you're waking up from surgery because you're just out. Like the anesthesiologist asks you a few simple questions, who they do, and then he puts you out. So um, when, you, um, when you come out of anesthesia, um, you, you, like don't, you still don't remember it for like an hour or two. So <laughs> apparently I was saying some very colorful things to the doctors. <laughs> I got to get an official list um, before reporting back on that one. I don't think I called them a bunch of ugly cocksuckers. I don't think, I think I did say some crazy shit though, for sure. They were telling me I was talking about Russian girls, but I don't remember what I said. But, but then like, um, when I came to, uh, I was, I couldn't see anything, but the, the nurse that I hired was there and like introducing herself. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I basically got to off at seven. They put me under for surgery. And then I, I woke up at like, I, w I came to it maybe like 11.30, um, being escorted up by the nurse. Um, and I was, I was still a little out of it on the, the med whatever meds and stuff, prednisone and shit they gave me during the surgery. Um, so they, you know, she got me in her car, drove over to the hotel. She took, uh, took me up to, we went up to the room. And then basically um, I, just, I just laid in bed uh, on Percocet in my Wi-Fi cocoon. Um, from like, what time did that girl leave? From like 12 to seven, that nurse was taking care of me and they swapped out another nurse at night. Um, the food I had, uh, she picked me up. Uh, I had that girl, she actually picked me up the, the plain Wendy's hamburger and the baked potato, which is like the only food I could find that fit my diet without messing up my stomach. Um, we took a lot of masticum. Uh, we took some B1. Uh, we took some charcoal. We took some Motrin. Hopefully my stomach doesn't start bleeding because my bloodstream is half Motrin right now, but we actually didn't take Percocet today. We took three Percocets yesterday, I think. Maybe only two. But I don't, Percocet is oxycodone and Tylenol and acetaminophen. So I don't want to take it because I know that's bad for my liver, but um, I had to take two or three just to stop the initial pain and feel better. And I figured out part of the reason my head was hurting was like my jaw was so tense and my jaw still hurts. I'm guessing like when I was under anesthesia and the surgery, like I'm guessing I was clenching my, um, my mouth in pain, like biting down really hard because my jaw muscles really hurt more almost more than the rest of my face um but yeah i know i didn't really have any pain in my face i just had like there's like a mild pressure and uh i mean i I'm, i've been getting headaches lately just from my liver damage so it's kind of like a, a mishmush uh of whether it's from the surgery or not but the motrin's been keeping it in check and uh, a very nice young girl uh swapped out for the nurse um, last night around seven, I think, I don't remember exactly, but that girl was, um, that girl stayed with me through the night and overnight. Um, she basically helped me eat dinner, my second meal, which was, um, the first meal I just had a plain hamburger patty and a baked potato from Wendy's. Uh, the second meal I had the plain hamburger patty with my homemade roll, uh, some cannellini beans in the jar and... I uh, had an apple with some mastic gum and B1. Um, the first night before the surgery, I think I slept four or five hours in that hotel room. Um, then the day, during the day after the surgery, I think I might have dozed off for an hour or two. And then last night, I think I got two or three hours of sleep, but I was basically just laying in bed awake. Um, the first nurse... Uh, the first nurse who's like who's helped me was like who was like partial owner of the company mentioned they have like an oxygen machine 
and like I was like oh can you give it to me and she brought it to the hotel and we have it here now which really helped like I was feeling okay but then with the oxygen machine I felt good my headache like completely went away and I was feeling good because the CO2 levels in LA and any city are kind of high so um, dude I was I wanted to take a video of it I had my you know I had my Wi-Fi shielding hood on two head covers and like uh, I had the the air in me so I was like in a zero Wi-Fi environment with um with oxygen so I was feeling okay but I would imagine like I probably I wouldn't be surprised if out of all the people that have ever gotten that procedure with that doctor that I feel the best out of all of them because and suffer the least because of my knowledge of the radiation and the oxygen because without that I mean I would have been dying dude I would have been fucking it would have been horrible anyway the hotel was a little loud um the airflow and the air quality in the hotel is really bad um doors are always slamming um and the main thing is that and I can't blame the doctor doctor wasn't 100% transparent about how blind I was going to be he was like oh by day two by you know well now it's it's only the morning after Thursday, the day of surgery, and I, I, my, I, I, I honestly, I have no clue what I look like right now because I can't see, but, um, like you've got, it might look like to you guys that my eyes are slightly open, um, and they are, I just see very blurry, because and but the doctor was saying, oh by you know by Saturday your eyes should start opening up again, my eyes never really swelled shut, um, but he put a contact a blurry contact in my eye to protect the eye from the stitches now i can't see through that contact so this guy wasn't and and he's taking that contact off thursday of next week so after i put put two and two i only hired the nurses until sunday you know uh, three more days but he's telling me this contact is staying in my eye until thursday so like, okay, what, what do you mean? I'm not going to be able to see until Thursday. So, I mean, I'm paying, I think I was paying the nurse, I think the nurse was like twelve or 1300 a night. And they have to care facilities 1800 and it's way better. And I didn't realize it was that close and it's more relaxing and I'm, I'm grounded out here. At least I think I'm grounded. I have no clue why, uh, what the scenery is here. I, again, guys, I'm actually, I'm not blind blind. Like the way my vision is now, I can see there's green grass here. It looks like a tree there, but like, I don't know, like, what the scenery is. Like, is there a highway there? I don't know how well this is grounded, but the point is, I think I'm grounded. It's nice and relaxed out here. The EMF is definitely going to be much lower. Uh, I don't think the air quality is that much better. Maybe it's a little better. But um, I figure, dude, I mean, if I'm... I'm going to have to pay... I'm going to have to get a nurse until throughout the whole next week anyway, so... If I'm going to pay, if the only reason I got the hotel was because I thought I would only need the nurse for a few days, but um, it's whatever, you know. That surgery was like almost 40000 and then the aftercare and everything else. Hey, it's not cheap, not cheap, but when you're, you know, these other people they take care of. Um, and I was speaking to these nurses, these people were not. And I know I use the word blind. Like I'm not blind, guys. I just can't see right now because of the surgery. Like blind might not be the correct term, but um, I, I literally can't do anything on my own. You know, I mean, I can get up and find the bathroom and use it. I can get a bottle of water and drink it, but like seeing where stuff is, and I literally cannot decipher anything. So, you know, I need to, I needed to leave the hotel and and have someone help me and, and do everything for me. So. Um, that's why we came here, so that's going to be the game plan. Um, yeah, I mean, this is going to suck if I literally can't see until uh, until um, until Thursday. Maybe as I open my eyes and, and I put some, maybe if I open my eyes and put some, as my eyes open more and I put some eye drops in, maybe I'll be able to see before and like, I'll be able to, I'm just hoping I'll be able to maybe check my texts and emails before Thursday, but it's not the end of the world, you know? It's only a week. Uh, the main thing I'm worried about now is uh, if I'm going to feel good enough at the end of next week to fly. I mean, I should feel good enough to fly home, but 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to, who knows if I'll be able to drive my car home from the airport. To, we'll see about that. Am I even in frame? Bro, was I not in frame this whole time? I don't fucking know. Yeah, no, hey, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy it's over with, you know, we made it out here, we, surgery's done now, it's just, uh, another week or so, and then we're back, back in New York, I guess. Yeah, I'm happy it's over with, but, like, I have no clue what I look like or what I'm gonna look like until, you know, I can see, so, I'm a little, I'm a little curious, but, um, thankfully I don't, you know, I don't feel bad, you know, I feel pretty good physically, my head doesn't hurt that much, so, um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, the, we got some very invasive procedures, this doctor doesn't usually, most people don't usually get those procedures with that doctor, um, so, my stomach's actually starting to hurt a little bit, oh, um, usually my bladder's fried, like, I have to go to the bathroom every half hour for some reason, but, um, the prednisone they gave me yesterday was like, it like blocked up my kidneys. So I like was barely peeing all day. And then suddenly at night I had to pee like every 10 minutes, dumping a huge amount of water. Um, so they actually gave me a few medications I didn't take. Um, I didn't take the antibiotic they gave me. I did take the Percocet. They gave me methylprednisone and um, I think it's called the mineral corticoid. I forgot what, I think it's produced by the adrenals. I don't remember exactly, but it's a, I think prednisone is like a fluid regulator. So, um, it really backed up my kidneys. And I remember my, my mother saying when she took that, when she was in the hospital, um, it fucked her up. So, uh, I'm not going to take it, but that's it for now, guys. I should probably go get some rest and uh, get in my Wi-Fi cocoon. Cause I don't know, like, I don't know if I'm getting fried out here or not. I don't know if there's any towers. I don't know what the radiation is, but should be good I mean I'm, I'm blind but this place is like a beautiful house in Bel Air um, yeah then uh, I got to go to Whole Foods this girl cooked me uh, the nurse cooked me steak bread beans so we're back on perfect diet no tummy troubles we got everything here kefir grains mastic some Motrin just in case just to reduce the swelling and uh just a few other things here, charcoal, zinc, molybdenum, Mountain Valley water. Now, I'm not spending much more money being here because the nurse, hiring a nurse out here in LA is already crazy expensive. Um, what would save you money is uh, not getting surgery. You know, I was in like, I think I said it in this video already, but I'm in like a unique scenario where I was eligible for like five different procedures that can be done to your eyes or normally People would only need one or two of them. But um, if you had someone that could like cook for you and take care of you, you'd save like, you know, you'd save the $15,000, but. And I think I said it in the past 10 minutes, like I can't blame the doctor for not telling me I'm gonna be blind for a week, but you know, if you go out here by yourself and you can't see for a week, like that type of medical care, when it's not covered by insurance, insanely expensive insanely expensive so you know had to be done unfortunately on, on my own but um i was lying in bed last night thinking frank what the fuck did you do you're gonna look different for the rest of your life <laughs> bit of an impulsive decision that's what i was literally laying in bed thinking i was like man i have no fucking clue what i look like now and i'm gonna look different the rest of my life but Already did it though. Already did it, so <laughs> too bad. I'm gonna uh, sit down and uh, eat second meal of the day. And uh, I, know, I mean, there's like there's Netflix devices, but the Wi-Fi in here isn't nearly as bad as the as the hotel. So yeah, like like I can see a little bit, but my vision's so blurry. Like I can decipher that. Um, like I press the red record button and that there's the red record light on, but outside of that, like nothing. So hopefully uh, we'll eat one or two more times today. Maybe we'll get to talk to the doctor and uh, just relax. 
All right, guys, second meal similar. We got the steak, cooked a little rare. Uh, instead of just plain bread, I got it toasted with a little butter on it, which is way better. And we got some beans, so this is basically going to be my meal for the next week, I guess. Yo, I see why you guys out in California order my steak. I don't know what they're feeding the cows out here, but I think all the grass is dying and the cows are just about dead in the field before they butcher them because these grass-fed steaks are fucking, like, they're pretty bad. They're pretty gross. Um, why did I start recording? I was going to say something. Uh, oh, yeah, no, I mean... I mean, I don't know how many of you guys watching this would ever get, like, surgery or something, but the emf and stuff is so important so you know if you do have someone that can take care of you just make sure like the place you book is like you know it's not like a hotel you want to be like in like a suburban reasonably isolated area just because of uh the emf stuff and then the air quality hopefully you can get an oxygen machine too i kind of lucked out on that uh for the city air and uh food also very important but uh, I don't want to, I mean, it's only the first day after surgery, so I should probably just film, like, um, I'll probably just film, like, a quick update every day, but now you guys kind of know, like, well, we, we kind of figured out what we're doing now. That hotel was, like, a fucking, that was a nightmare compared to this, so now, I mean, dude, if it wasn't, like, if it wasn't such a crazy invasive surgery and I could actually see like I could just be, I would just be doing this shit myself in an Airbnb. I'm I'm physically fine. Like like I feel like my body feels fine. I'm good. I can move out and stuff. But my vision is just it's actually a little better now. But like I can't really see much. And despite me making all the blind jokes, um, I'm basically like it's just like imagine like your vision just really blurry almost it's almost like you put vaseline in your eyes or something and like everything's just like you can't really make things out you have to get up really close but um, we'll see we'll see it's like saturday morning 7 a.m the next day and thankfully like i feel really physically good like i just can't sleep like i haven't really been having headaches um if my eyes start like hurting you know, I just take a Percocet every six or seven hours. And, um, you know, I'll have, like, my, uh, I'll have my, I'm eat, I'm just eating right now, so I have my hood down. But, like, I'll have the, the Wi-Fi shielding hood on and, like, the head nets. And um, that oxygen machine helps a lot because, like, normally I wouldn't need the oxygen machine. But, like, if I put the tube in the head net, I can, like sleep easily with um with because the oxygen's coming directly into the head net so it's like kind of like a weird setup where like i don't have to worry about asphyxiating myself with the head cover um uh, but the reason i'm filming now to give you guys an update is like I'm, I'm having a difficult time i'm assuming with the sleep like again since i feel good and the purpose that's helping like i'm okay but I wasn't sleep. Remember, I wasn't sleeping before I got out here. I was having issues with the B1 and the copper. Now, if my blood copper levels are high, there's two possib like there's two possibilities. One, we have to just not do anything, eat as much food as possible, and hopefully the blood copper levels lower. Or two, which I think might ha I might have to take zinc and molybdenum with every meal but i was doing that yesterday my bladder felt better but i still didn't sleep so it's possible that the zinc and molybdenum are uh, are pulling more tissue copper out and elevating the blood levels because zinc zinc directly pulls out and binds to copper molybdenum bind, binds to copper in the digestive system and increases urinary excretion of copper. But I don't know if molybdenum would necessarily directly lower blood copper. I'm good. I haven't, I didn't read enough into the literature to figure it out, but I'm guessing zinc can be a bit aggravating, so I probably shouldn't take it. 
and that molybdenum should just work but the first day I, when i took molybdenum on its own it didn't seem to help much so i'm not really sure i'm just gonna play it safe today and see if i sleep um worst case scenario if we don't sleep we'll try a higher dose b1 tomorrow and if that doesn't do anything you know maybe we won't do that but if like i if my sleep is still fucked up for like another day or two then I'll move to the under, the other end of the spectrum and try to increase the dose of zinc and molybdenum. Because if I'm not sleeping anyway, like, it's not going to get much worse. But, uh, no, thankfully we're, we're in here and uh, I was spending the same amount of money anyway because I was, I was paid for the nurse and the hotel. So this is the same price and uh, EMF's definitely lower. It's more relaxing. More importantly, you know, they're, they're cooking them up. I'm gonna cook in the food for me. Um, the pain isn't that bad. Like, if I just laid in bed without any pain meds and just laid there, like, I'd be uncomfortable, but I'd probably be fine. But as soon as, like, I move or open my eyes or see any light, like, I might be repeating myself, but, like, <laughs> well, I know, I know, is. Like, talking about how, like, the doctor kind of, you know, wasn't 100% transparent about, like, the recovery. But he did he did mention stitches. What he failed to put into a coherent sentence was, I'm going to stitch your eyes open like a horror movie. Because <laughs> I cannot, I think, I might have said this yesterday. I can't blink or open my eyes. Which is kind of annoying because, like, you know when you have dry eyes... And like you blink and you hydrate your eyes like i can't do that so it's not that bad though but i i i think uh i think until we go see him on thursday which is fucking dude it's saturday morning we got saturday to go through sunday monday tuesday monday. dude i got five i gotta i'm not gonna be able to see for five fucking days i'm gonna go crazy hopefully it gets better but I don't know, because if my eyes are stitched in this position, and there's uh, a contact lens on my eye, which is foggy, I don't know um, if I'm going to be able to see at all. It's not that big of a deal. I was, you know, I, I, I was hoping I was going to be able to check my emails and, and see how my business is doing on Monday or Tuesday. But worst case scenario, it just has to wait till Thursday when he takes them off. And then once I have access to my computer, like, it's not, like, my flight's on Saturday, but it's not that big of a deal if I have to stay in L.A. a little longer, because as long as, like, I have computer access and stuff. I don't know. I might not. Maybe I'll film, like, Sunday or Monday. I don't know. But we're just going to be, like, laying in bed, eating the same meal. Oh, I got I to gotta remember to ask the nurse. Uh, we got to see if the hotel got my, because I sent water kefir to myself. Which might help me sleep. I have water key for grains, but like, for some reason, those don't. Sometimes those don't help me really sleep. They just kind of prevent the acne. Anyway, uh, I shouldn't even be fucking filmed. Dude. Most people would be too, too fucked up to even film. But um, I'm probably just gonna take a Percocet and try to lay down a few hours, dude. Because if I don't take it. The tension in my jaw, I can't, first of all, I can't believe I forgot my retainer. Like, that was probably the most important thing, because now, like, my teeth are shifting, and it hurts, and it feels weird, and I can't, like... And the tension in my jaw from that fucking... I must have been... Because I, I think I said this already, but, like, when you're under anesthesia, you, you feel pain, you just don't remember it. So I must have been, like, clenching my jaw so hard. It's, like, so tense. But, like, when I take the Percocet, like... It's fine, it all goes, pain all goes away, so. I'd rather just be, if I, if I can't fucking do anything, and I can't see, like, I'd rather be just zonked out and laying down. Because the burgers that did, like, help me, like, I was able to kind of, like, doze in and out of sleep with it a little bit, but, anyway. Am I fucking rolling? I'm recording. I wonder what I, 
I'm sorry, I just don't know what I look like. I feel like, uh, I probably said this already too, but I feel like Zoolander Blue Steel already. Cause I feel like I'm squinting with all this shit on my face. <laughs> I said it already, but like, I fucking like, I'm almost like lying in bed like, bro, what the fuck did I do? It's already done. Whatever. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope I was recording that last clip. I think I checked. Um, so that last clip was just an update of me uh, talking about how I felt and just some random stuff. But while I remembered, I want to talk about like this procedure in general and relevance to facial development. So like, technically, yeah, it's a cosmetic procedure, you know, like you're changing your appearance, but same with like my double jaw surgery, like there are people with eyes that like look like mine are going to, like their eyes look like that normally. And there are also people like that had normal jaw, like what happens is like when the skull doesn't form properly, if the zygomatic bones, if like the orbital sockets are like, you know, they're gonna be smaller because you didn't get enough nutrition because there's less space for soft tissue in the eye, it's gonna bulge out. So, you know, usually when someone has like a narrow skull or like um, le poor facial development, the, the eyes start bulging out, which is kind of what I had. So what they do is they, you know, they go in and just remove some of the bone and stuff. They, they hollow it out, which kind of is like almost replicating like having a wire area in there same thing with like getting a nose job like you people get a nose job because their nose is big technically it's probably because the rest of their face didn't develop as big as it should so it sounds dumb but like they don't have a uh, they don't have a large nose they have a small face it sounds again it sounds dumb but like if you got some dude with like a huge giant nose technically speaking I mean, he could just have a huge nose, but like, technically speaking, the rest of the face just isn't matching it, so. Bro, what the fuck did I do to myself? I look like a retarded Chinese Zoolander. <gasps> oh my, all right, I'm just, I'm being dramatic. Trust the process. We'll see how it looks in two weeks. <laughs> um, it's Sunday. Physically, I felt like 100%. Honestly, like I want to exercise because like I, like, I haven't been moving and stuff and like, I have a lot of energy from laying in bed the whole time, but like visually, um, when I was patting my eye with the, um, like a damp towel this morning, the left contact accidentally came out, which isn't a big deal. Sometimes they fall out. Um, it's just to like kind of protect the eye from, uh, from the stitches. So now I, I, I can see like, a, my vision is still very blurry and um, in my eye, but it was good enough that like I could get the nurse to help me look at my I'm just making sure nothing happened at the business like because dude like Something goes wrong every week whether like the freezer goes out or like a delivery gets mistaken or something happens like a, The Amish like last week just last week the Amish the, the trucking company for the Amish didn't fucking shop So I'm happy to just check my messages to make sure that nothing fucking went wrong um so we should be in the clear. Um, like, I don't really have, like, I don't re like the emails to answer the customer service, like that can wait until the end of the week. I'm not worried about it. Um, but yeah, no, like vision wise, like since that contact's out, like my vision's a lot clearer in my left eye, but it's still really blurry that like, like I couldn't actually cook food or do stuff on my own still. Like, I'd be, it'd be too difficult to do it, so, um, yeah. I don't think we're going to be, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I was just hoping, um, I was hoping that, like, maybe I'd get to go out one night before my flight on Saturday, or, like, maybe I could film a restaurant vlog one night, but I don't, hey, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I, I highly doubt I will, well... I mean, I have to feel good enough to drive by Thursday, Friday, because when we get back to New York, the car's at the airport, so. Yeah, if my, like, 
if my liver wasn't made of paper mache at this point, uh, it would have probably gone a lot smoother. Like, I think my liver resembles a fried pork chop more than a healthy human liver. Oh, we did try. I consulted my inner nutrition genius and we decided to, to take the zinc and molybdenum did help me sleep, so. I was worried that it might chelate more copper, but we ended up needing it, so. We're feeling better, we're feeling okay. And uh, it's only, it's only day three. It's because the surgery was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Today's like middle of the day, Sunday. I just ate breakfast. Um, I need to, I need to just like shower or bathe or something because I feel like, I feel kind of gross. Uh, right now I'm like itching and stuff. I've been like scratching my head all day. You guys want a closer look? How do my eyes look? Looks fucked up, right? I look like a fucking avatar or some alien shit, right? This is fucking... <laughs> yeah, I, I need to stop looking at my fucking... I gotta wait to see what it looks like when we're recovered because... I look like a demon or some shit, right? Because my eyes are fucking black. It's fucking weird. Anyway. I need to stop fucking around. Uh, I think that's everything. Yeah, I don't remember... I think I said it at the beginning of the vlog, like what actual procedures he did, but um, the, the, the doctor's office did try to call me, uh, I think right at, like after the surgery or Friday or something, but like they called this number and I had my phone on airplane mode, so I wasn't able to pick up. Uh, I'm still, I just, I mean, I'm assuming everything went well. I just wanted to ask the doctor like, hey, you know, how'd the surgery go? What, what'd you do in there exactly? Um, but what he you know, was telling me he was going to do was the, the double wall orbital decompression. So he goes in behind the eye socket into the orbital area and he basically grinds out bone to, to let the eyes go back. So that was one procedure. Another procedure was, um, infraorbital rim implant, which puts, um, just like a, basically a piece of silicone under the eye to, to get rid of like the negative candle tilt. Um, and then he does a, a lower eyelid retraction, which moves the lower eyelid. So again, first procedure, orbital decompression. Second procedure is the infraorbital rim implant. Third procedure is the lower eyelid retraction. And then, what are we on, three? And then there's fourth procedure is the upper eyelid ptosis, which is like, is for droopy upper eyelid. So like my right upper eyelid was a little droopy, like it was asymmetrical to the left one. I didn't really care that much, but like my eyelids were low in general. So what he actually ended up doing was we did both of them. We, we raised the right one more and then the left one we raised a little bit. So uh, I'm excited to see what I'm gonna end up looking like, but I'm just like impatient, losing my mind here. I think I wanna rest my eyes for at least another day or two because if i like squint and look at the phone like i can kind of decipher like the emails and the messages but it's very very difficult so i don't want to like strain my eyes or anything right now so i'm gonna wait until like tuesday or wednesday and then maybe if we can do some work then if not he's gonna take the contacts and stitches out thursday yeah i don't know i don't really think it's relevant like like me explaining the details of like like if you're gonna get this procedure yourself, because like, I don't think anyone would ever really get, I don't know how many people are even eligible for this or if they would even need to, to like think about how they would go about it. But um, I do wanna say that like th this place, uh, the name of the company is Zen Healing Retreat. And if you do need a nurse or someone to help you after like you get a procedure out here in LA, 100% best fucking idea. it's not even comparable guys like oh, oh that's what i want oh the reason i'm even filming now is i wanted to show you guys the fucking setup and why um thankfully like i found this place because i have i have my emf hood right so i'm like i put the emf hood on which blocks some radiation and then i have like i have the head covers that i put on to sleep you know i put them like i put them on my head right I put them on my head. Sometimes I just 
I just keep them like this so I can breathe out my mouth. But what's what's really special is they have they let me use the I got the oxygen machine here. So um, like most of the time I don't use the oxygen, but like if I'm getting a little bit of a headache or like I'm feeling a little nauseous, the oxygen makes it like go away immediately. So I'm not really wearing this, but um, like if I have the head cover on for a few hours and I put the oxygen in my nose, like I can breathe easily with the head cover on. And uh, like just in general, it's like a low radiation area. And I can like, I mean, I have my like grounding thing plugged into the wall here, which I couldn't do in the hotel. And also they have like a little plot of grass outside I was going on and stepping on. So I feel like a million times fucking better than I did a few days ago in that hotel. And on top of it, like, obviously the most important thing is the food. Like, me having the, just the organic, minimally inflammatory meals with my supplements is night, night and day, night and day. You know, I thought, like, I thought having just, like, burger patties and potato would be fine, but it's, it's not. I need to, I'm having, like, the, you know, steak cooked rare with, uh, with the white beans and the bread. That's, my stomach's good on that. But, uh, you know, I got the, so like I'll put this on my, I'll, I'll show you guys the, the fucking crazy cocoon set up. It's like normally like this, like you can't fucking breathe, but <laughs> because we have the oxygen thing, like I can breathe. So I'm not, if I really need like one or need zero EMF, it's like, it's good to go. It's fine, which I normally wouldn't be able to do. So we kind of lucked out. We kind of lucked out. But, uh, yeah, most people, like, I mean, this is, it just seems, like, crazy in general. Like, all these nurses I spoke to, like, I'm, like, I'm the first patient they treated that was actually, like, not, I mean, I'm not technically blind, but, like, the vision impairment thing. So, it's definitely not a common thing to have to deal with. Yeah, overall, the pain's pretty much gone. Uh, my nose is dripping a bit. I haven't gotten sick at all or anything because I've been doing the iodine rinse. Uh, just my eyes are like, just like a little irritated, a little like itchy. I can kind of like, I don't know if you guys see my eyes. Maybe I kind of like blink now and let the tears like hydrate my eyes, which feels a lot better because I couldn't move my eyes yesterday. I'm probably repeating myself so much in this vlog, but dude, I am not looking forward to fucking working back when I get to New York. Dude. Oh my fucking God, I'm so over it. I'm so fucking over it. I need a permanent fucking vacation, dude. I probably said this too, but like, I'm just like fucking sitting here thinking, what the fuck did I do? What the fuck did I do? Oh wait, you know what? I'm gonna try to find that email to see when I got the genius idea to get my eyes gouged out. It was uh, summer of last year. So June of 2022 was when I was uh, interested in getting this procedure. And then like, he told me about like, the vision stuff and the recovery and I like it like turned me off a bit and then like over the next year I thought about it a lot if I wanted to get it done or not and, and eventually like towards the middle of this year I convinced myself to do it so as I said earlier like this is not like <coughs> this is not like um this wasn't like an impulse thing you know I thought about it for almost two years and then scheduled the surgery and I felt good about it so I was like whatever you know either way it's gonna look better than it's gonna look better after than before. All right, guys, it's Monday around noon. I'm in this really <laughs> nice house in Bel Air. I feel like I'm working at a San Francisco tech startup in some billionaire's house because I'm like on my laptop. But like, honestly, I shouldn't be doing this right now. I should probably be resting my eyes. Um, I can somewhat decipher my emails. It's difficult. It's taking me like maybe three to four probably longer than three more than three to four times longer than normal to just like kind of read them and decipher them but um i'm just gonna try to get all my emails settled so that then i can take a rest for a few days the rest of the weekend and won't have to worry about any business stuff we had uh, a good thing i checked because the uh the foam containers for the eggs showed up and it was going to get held in the port if i didn't respond to the email so thankfully i saw that and i was able to respond to that but uh 
not, nothing nothing crazy happened this week. Nothing crazy happened, which is the main good thing with the business. But overall, I'm feeling okay. Uh, I'm not sure if the mild tension in my head is from the surgery or it's from <laughs> incorporating dairy back into my diet. I've been having a, I've been having a little butter here and there. So I'm just going to take a Motrin. Uh, I've been taking Motrin consistently. I'm going to take a Motrin and see if that helps at all. Oh, because we went to the hotel and they did have... They did have my water key for shipment. I drank this, which might not have been a good idea. Um, wasn't that fermented, wasn't that carbonated. So maybe maybe the water key for messed me up a little bit too in this meal, but I'm just hoping it's gonna help me sleep better. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how today goes. But I feel I feel okay. I don't feel that bad, which is all that matters. Yeah, I may mean, probably kind of look the same. It's just a little, as long as a little better. What's nice is like, I'm ba I basically feel like I'm crying the whole time. My eyes are so moist that they don't dry out and hurt that much. But I, I literally have like water streaming down my eyes out of my nose. It could be worse. It could be worse, but I'm gonna do some work for a little bit and then probably just relax the rest of the day. And hopefully maybe try to get some sleep because we didn't sleep that well last night. Yeah, it's only Monday and we're gonna be seeing the surgeon Thursday morning he's going to remove the stitches and the contact and everything he said I could fly back he said I could move my flight up to Thursday and fly back that day but I have a feeling like I'm, a, I'm probably better off staying until my scheduled flight on Saturday just because I have a feeling like if I go back Thursday morning to New York like I don't I, I it's probably not safe to drive with how my vision is going to be but we'll see all right guys it's Tuesday I'm always wearing this hood to minimize the EMF. These are on wifi.com. I'll show you guys the bathroom. This house is so nice. I took a bath the other day. They got a full shower. That's like the toilet area. Double sinks. Just really, really expensive house. This is like a house I would have if I had a rich Russian girlfriend. She would have me stay here and tie me up to the bed. <laughs> There's like a balcony here that overlooks the front drive, which isn't really much of a, a view. But, um... I felt pretty physically good since the first day, and my stomach was a little wonky from the hotel food and the Wendy's, but now we got the organic food, and we're feeling good, I'm feeling okay. Still taking Motrin fairly consistently. Uh, the, the pain in the eyes and the irritation is there, and there is a little bit of like light pressure in my head, but what's really strange is, I'm curious if, since he did the orbital decompression, and remove some tissue from behind my eyes if that's going to potentially fix my migraine headaches as like a side effect because I've heard like thyroid eye disease patients get migraine headaches and since my eyes were slightly bulging maybe that had something to do with my headaches I don't know just a hunch I guess we'll see like over the next few months after I've recovered from this like if I never get headaches again then I know that it did something um, but call the doctor's office up uh, we spoke to him yesterday. He said everything went pretty well. We'll speak to him again on uh, on Thursday when we go to get the stitches removed. And I'll get more details. Thursday will probably be the last day of this vlog. I'm just going to... Because, I mean, how long am I going to film recovery and do updates for? You know? The, the two-week point is supposed to be when, like, the swelling and everything has subsided. So what we'll probably do is, like, Thursday here will be the last like part of the vlog and then maybe I'll film one more day at the two week point and then we'll post the vlog. So it'll be like daily updates from days one through seven. I don't know, we'll see. And then maybe the, the second week, I won't up, do updates as frequently because we're supposed to be back in New York on Saturday, which is like day 10, where most of the swelling would still have not subsided. But uh, my stomach's been pretty good. We got the meals consistently. Sleep has been okay. I've been sleeping a few hours a night. Not the best, but, you know, four or five hours a night is better than I usually do. Uh, the zinc supplementing helped. We, we're doing some B1 as well. The food's good. Um, I'm feeling okay. Stomach, my stomach is, it feels a little, I get a little stomach pain, but that might be because I've gone through like half a bottle of Motrin this week. <laughs> um, so it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, no, my eyes are just, they just feel irritated. 
what I'm just I've just been doing some work on my computer catching up on emails and everything we're pretty much all caught up but just it's it's so much every day like guys I used to I used to answer emails and do customer service and stuff on my computer for at least an hour or two a day so even I mean we only missed four or five days of work and I've been on my computer all day yesterday and today so um it's a lot a lot more than I usually have to do in one session And uh, as usual, business is hemorrhaging money, but go figure. Could be worse. But, uh, yeah, that's really, that's really the only update for today. Been doing more and more. I'm doing an update tomorrow, Wednesday, and then do, a, do an update after seeing the surgeon on Thursday. All right, guys, it's Wednesday. Uh, we're getting, uh, stitches out tomorrow morning so i'm looking forward to that i'm guessing it's gonna make my eyes look somewhat more normal because i think they're like kind of sewn shut right now which is pretty wild i'm feeling okay uh bad sleep last night they had an extra percocet they gave me because this doctor wouldn't give me any more pain meds which is ridiculous because i took enough motrin to burn a hole in my stomach and it didn't make me feel any better and I, I can't take Tylenol because I think that's even worse for your liver. Tylenol gives me bad headaches. So when I see that doctor tomorrow, I'll give him a little a little piece of my mind. I spent fucking $40,000 on surgery. He won't give me fucking pain meds. So instead of like having a, a nice relaxing week and feeling okay on Percocet, I gotta fucking lay in bed awake with insomnia with my fucking eyes burning. It's fucking it's nothing short of disgusting. But I mean, if it wasn't for like wasn't for that, like, you know, like, what the fuck was I gonna do? Like, threaten the guy, like, what was I gonna explain to the guy beforehand? Look, I had a bad experience with double draw surgery seven years ago where they didn't give me any fucking pain meds and sent me home with fucking Tylenol after angle grinding my jaw for six hours straight. Like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Like, the doctor acts like he didn't just hit me in the face with a hammer. Like, you're not gonna give me pain meds? Like, what am I gonna do? Like, I don't know what it is, but... It's ridiculous. Like, what was I going to say? Oh, well, if you don't give me more than six Percocet, I'm not going to get the surgery with you. Like, what the fuck? I sound like, like, I sound like a fucking drug addict because he's fucking... It's ridiculous. But, um... I'm feeling okay. We we switched, we switched the diet up. Um, no more butter, no more cream. So I'm just going to do... Uh, steak, bread, and we made a white bean puree. They actually... What, what what saved me here was even though I'm spending crazy money here, they have a full kitchen, they have kitchen if I had, if I was gonna if I wanted to get an Airbnb, I mean, first of all, I don't think I could do it without having someone help me. Even if I did, I'd have to buy like all this fucking kitchen equipment and I couldn't make my food, it'd be a nightmare. So I like I was able to make the wiping puree, we have the steaks, we have the diet, everything should be good. So I ate this morning, I'm feeling okay. What's very strange to me is and I, I don't, I'm not sure what it is. I might have said this already, but my hydration cues have been off. Back when I was in PA, I was used to PA in New York. I would always be thirsty and chugging water because I was thirsty, but my actual thirst like hasn't, I have to force myself to drink because I don't get thirsty. And my bladder has been much better. Usually I have to go to the bathroom a lot, but I haven't really been having to go. That could be the high calcium Mountain Valley water that I'm drinking instead of the Fuji low mineral water or it could be something else I don't know but uh yeah I'm still feeling pretty good physically uh it's just the the stitch on this eye started stinging so that kind of hurts a little bit all right guys it's Thursday one week after the surgery doctor took the stitches out I don't look like as much of an abomination, but still swollen, eyes are swollen. I thought I was gonna look like somewhat normal in two weeks, but the doctor said it might take like a month or two. Um, but ba based on what I look like now, like I, I'm pretty sure it was the right decision. I think I'm gonna look better overall in the end. Uh, the only thing I was worried about was like, I already had a long face. So I wasn't sure if like, even if like raising the the lower eyelid a little bit made my face a little longer, like 
I still think I'll look better overall in the end anyway. But uh, I still can't touch or really wash my eyes for another week. So it was one week, no touching or washing, no water at all. And now it's another week, two weeks total of no, um, no washing the eyes, no water at all. But um, the nurse here separated my eyelashes with a Q-tip. So I can kind of see now, I can see pretty well. And I look a little normal without the pads and stuff on my face. So uh, we're gonna be just relaxed last day here tomorrow. Um, I can't exactly wipe this blood and gook off my eyes, so I don't think I will be going to a restaurant while in L.A., unfortunately. Um, uh, my mom was a little sad. She hasn't seen me in a little while, so um, first thing I do when I get back to the airport in New York, I'm going to go see her, but I'm scared as fuck because I didn't tell them. And like, my mother, like... She'd be like, oh, you're so handsome before you don't need it. Like, so I'll probably just wear sunglasses. And then when I get there, I'll tell them, like, I had some eye surgery. and not show them and just uh, hopefully don't freak out too much. Yeah, so after he took the stitches out, now there's kind of, like, no real pain at all. I just feel like the swelling and uh, my little, maybe mild stinging, mild discomfort. But I think I'll be fine to drive. Yeah, I was hoping I'd be able to start filming YouTube and stuff sooner, but I guess not, so... We'll probably still film like the the free range meat vlogs and I might film like one video just announcing this wearing sunglasses or something but uh, in regards to actually like filming normal content like um, what's it like like maybe like educational videos and certain things I'm not filming those with a fucked up face like because then like what if people watch a video on zinc five years from now they're like what happened to that guy's face like I'd rather wait like I'd rather chill for two or three months, kind of fully recover, see what I look like. But I don't know. I, th I think it's going to look... I think it's going to look pretty good. Well, oh, another thing I'm worried about is these fucking... Imp like, he put these implants here, which are kind of swollen. I'm hoping they go down a bit. Um, I don't think they look bad even now. Um, does it look better than before? Probably slightly objectively, but... You know, I mean, I, I've always had a long face, so it's fucking whatever. The one thing you can't change. Let me show you guys in the mirror. Here, I actually look pretty good. I actually look pretty good here. At least compared to, uh, oh, I asked the doctor um, if he gave me a neutral or positive candle tilt. I was hoping he did neutral, but he actually did positive. So uh, I'm, it's kind of crazy because I'm going from like an extremely negative cantle tilt to a positive one. I thought he was just going to leave it at neutral, but um, the uh, the right eye was a little more small, and so and of course it's going to be a little asymmetrical. But I'm happy. I'm gl I'm glad we got this over with. Uh, you know, something I was like, you know, I'm going to regret it if I don't do it. But I think, um, I'm just trying to debate, like, if I'm going to film another day for this, uh, for this surgery vlog, or if I want to post it sooner than later. Because if it's Thursday now, I'm back in New York on Saturday, I announce that, like, we had the surgery with some, I'm going to do some joke shorts that are really funny. I'm going to pretend I got beat up. You get, it would have been posted already by the time this goes up, but I, I joked like that I got beat up by a vegan girl or something. Um, so those are the shorts about how I'm going to announce the surgery. And then I'll probably post the free range meat vlog. But then I think, um, I think this surgery video is probably going to be posted next week. What I really like is before he put these implants in, my cheek went from like here to here. It went from like here to here. And now it goes from here to here. So it looks a little better. Hope I don't end up like handsome Squidward or some shit. Um, oh no, we're going to post, um, after we post the the joke video about getting up by getting having some vegan girls from her to tell me's in my face we're gonna do the giveaway because uh, i made a promise to myself we're gonna do a giveaway for blind people and then we'll post this vlog so if you guys didn't see that check those out before all right guys it is friday last day in la 
Uh, some other person wanted the suite, so they just moved me to this room. I don't really care. Uh, I just wanted like the the sole bathroom space initially because I thought I might have some stomach issues eating the food out here, but my stomach's been the best it's been in a long time actually. Because thankfully, you know, they're cooking all the food for me, and uh, I just took a another bath, got all new fresh clothes on, ready for the flight tomorrow morning. Shouldn't be too bad. I think we're gonna get a Tupperware of um, of steak, bread, and beans for the flight tomorrow just to eat to make sure. Eyes look pretty good, considering I'm not supposed to look normal for a month. Like, I don't look that bad. I just look like a little weird, like I'm squinting or blue steel. It's just, they're still dirty and there's dried blood. And my eyelashes are like really messed up because I can't clean them or wet them, but Yeah, we got a game plan, a few videos to, to film for next week, get a few business things done. But uh, I think uh, I think for like a week or two, it should slow down a little more. So I'll do uh, probably, probably be bored at the airport for the last part of the vlog. Uh, I've been feeling really good, even though I'm not sleeping that well, but Again, I've probably said it a lot, like, I wasn't sleeping before I got here. We have copper issues, so. Um, I think everything looks pretty symmetrical. Like, the bottom eyelids are kind of in the same spot. Maybe this one looks a little higher, but I can't really tell. But, like, it's complete nonsense that I'm even looking at that until, like, like a, like a month or two from now. I should see how it looks and before I worry about anything. Yeah, I guess we'll give you guys the outro when we're at the airport tomorrow. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else to cover today. Yeah, after he took those stitches out, virtually all the pain's gone. Maybe a little tightness and discomfort. There's there's still some stitches on the end here that are supposed to dissolve. But, um, yeah, so over the next few months, the, the eyes should open up a little bit more. Swelling should go down, but swelling, swelling in the cheeks, too, so... Should look a little better. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so most of my face is protected all day. I like tighten this up. Sometimes I put a mask on my face too, just to reduce the EMF. Like when I go to the airport tomorrow morning, I'll put the mask on my face to, to just block as much EMF as possible. And then we'll put the head covers on on the, uh, on the flight to make sure we don't get a headache or feel bad. All right, guys, it's Saturday morning. I'm about to leave for the airport LAX in about 40 minutes. Didn't really get to do anything in LA. I hung out, I hung out a little bit with some kid that I argue with on the on the TikTok live streams. I was trying to get him to to do a joke where we pretend he beat me up, but he didn't want to do it. <laughs> that was like the only reason I hit a lot. It's fucking. I thought it would have been funny, but he wasn't down for the joke. So, and I definitely didn't like. I didn't want to do a restaurant vlog because I didn't like want to potentially mess up my stomach with a bottle of wine before my flight but uh everything looks everything looks pretty good uh it's not even that noticeable um i think the right eyelid is slightly higher but that eye was more swollen and it does feel a little tighter by the stitch so we'll see we'll see how symmetrical it is in a few weeks but it still it still looks really good uh so i don't know i guess i'll find out in uh two or three months if this was a a good idea or a neutral idea because I don't I don't think like there's really any chance of me looking worse than before uh, I just there is a possibility that I might not look like as much better as I thought I would but I don't know you guys will be able to tell me that so I guess this will be the last day of this vlog and then you guys can kind of just watch my progress over the uh over the next few months because like I can't I think I said it in the last clip I can't wait like I can't wait like another week or two. I can't do another week or two of vlogging and then post this because I'm gonna post other videos and people are gonna ask like what the hell I did to my eyes. So like tomorrow, Sunday, we're just gonna post the shorts with the vegan girl beating me up joke. Monday, we'll post uh, uh, the giveaway video for blind people. And then uh, Tuesday, we'll be back to the meat vlog and this video will probably post it for you guys on Thursday of this week. 
So I guess that's really it. And uh, maybe we'll do some restaurant vlogs for me. Maybe I'll drive to this uh, New York for New Year and Christmas, or uh, Christmas and New Year's or something, and I'll go to restaurants on those days. I don't know. I don't really, I don't really feel up to doing that type of stuff, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, pr pretty much no pain. I'll give you guys a final update, I guess, on the actual actual surgery instead of rambling on about other stuff. Uh, little to no pain, slight tightness, and sometimes a little pain in that stitch. Uh, but in general, just a little like eyes feel a little dry. They're constantly tearing up. Vision is still blurry, although I think I can still drive better than most most people. Um, a little worried about driving at night when I get back to New York, but I don't really have a choice because I left my car at the airport. I uh, could, have, could have rented a car and, and dropped it off at the rent place, and then I could have taken an Uber back home when I got back. That would have been the smart thing to do. Also would have cost me about $500 more, but we're fucking hemorrhaging money out here anyway. No, I, could, I couldn't have done this without um, uh, the name of the place is Zen Healing Retreat, dude. Would have been would have been a complete fucking nightmare. Complete fucking nightmare out here if I didn't have this place. You know, beautiful, nice place, low, relatively low EMF. Air quality in LA is definitely an issue, but they had they had a that fucking oxygen machine really saved my my me from getting too many headaches and stuff. And the doctor didn't prescribe me any pain meds, so thankfully, you know, we had some extra lying around for a few nights where I needed them. Uh, so that that really kind of saved me on that end. Uh, but overall, not the not the worst week in my life. Although it would have been nice to to have felt better and been able to maybe do a few things and go to a few restaurants and stuff. But I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of nothing I'm too enthusiastic about doing uh, yeah so who knows maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll come back to LA in a few months but the, the doctor's appointment and doctor check in is it can be virtual so I don't necessarily have to fly out here and I really don't like the traveling in the airport stuff like it's just a long day of travel you know two three hours to the airport six seven hours in the airport on the flight and then uh, it's a long 10 12 hour trip so that's why even like if I want to go on vacation somewhere, I just wouldn't be that happy to do it because of the travel part. But um, I think that's everything to talk about. We're in the hole for way too much money, but uh, that, that line of credit I took out should cover all the surgery, all the, the, the lodging, and then the giveaway as well. And then I'll pay it off over the next year. But I'll see you guys soon. We'll just probably post as normal, and maybe we'll do a surgery update in the three months. In three months or whatever. Last clip of the vlog, I promise, guys. I'm laughing because my car is still here in the airport parking lot. I thought maybe there's a chance that, like, the the New York City ticket agencies would check and, like, tow your car if you had outstanding tickets. Because after I left New York, like, I never paid, like, $1,000 worth of parking tickets. <laughs> well, my car's here, so... We're not taking a cab from the airport to the tow pound tonight, thankfully. New York air is about twice as easy to breathe as the LA air.